Monet, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I cannot believe I'm in the seat right now. Super excited to talk. Glad to have you. So yeah. my first question is, describe to me what the Monet and McMichael brand is. It's kind of crazy to think that like Monet is a brand. It's just something bigger than me now. Um, and I'm honestly so proud to see like the audience that has kind of gathered around to, you know, the girls' corner, it's all things safe. I feel like at the end of the day, it's just about being yourself, the realest version of yourself unapologetically. So I love it. And there's so many, like, to be a creator these days, all you need is, is a phone. You have a massive following, massive influence. How do you stand out against that sea of just everyone else on the web? You know, I think with social media nowadays, it's like you never know what's kind of like real or, or not. So I feel like you always know that in my corner, it's just the realist. <laughs> I kind of feel like the big sister kind of where it's like, you know, you can look up to me whether you're older or younger. Like it's a place where, you know, we can all learn from each other. Is there a spark or is there one video or one piece of content that you posted that kind of started accelerating or making all the difference in, in your in your brand or in your business? Mm -hmm. I feel like it definitely was a slow and steady growth over time. Um, there was a few moments that went viral. I remember one of my first Get Ready With Me is where I felt like there was a true connection where, you know, I'm just oversharing about my life in the corner and like, you know, we can all relate as humans on some level. But yeah, it definitely started as like a hobby in school and just kind of sharing anything and everything from, you know, beauty or just like lifestyle or, you know. Were you posting just as a hobby for fun, or would you, when you started, was it an aspiration to, to you know, be a social media star? Yeah, no, I definitely had dreams. Like, I grew up on YouTube, but loved watching like just all of the you know creators live their best life, go on brand trips. Like, it was definitely a dream, but nothing I ever thought could ever be my life. So, um, it definitely was a hobby at first. I never thought it could ever come this far. I'm so just shocked. I'd pinch myself. It happened so fast. Too. Like a year ago, I was in nursing school, so I mean, I can't believe I'm sitting here right now. <laughs> yeah, tell me, you, you graduated a year yeah. ago. Congratulations, yeah. from Rutgers. Yeah. Right, Jersey. Love yes, it. Jersey. And nursing schools, you know, it's, this is super intense. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, how did you balance nursing school and then your your creator platform? Yeah, I feel like it, it really was a passion that I didn't realize that I had inside. That like, and for nursing school too, it was such a big passion. Um, but I feel like I always made time, whether it was just like. I'm really big on a routine where it's like Monday through Friday, I'm you know clocking into my classes, putting that time aside to study. So I did have that free time where I could do whatever I wanted. And I felt like in nursing school, a lot of people like had that mindset where it was like, I have no life, like I can't do anything. It's like, you know, just cross your teeth, dot your eyes, and like have a Saturday and Sunday. I feel like that that works for me. So, what was your first paid social gig? When was the first time you went from uh, became professional? I guess or yeah. started thinking that this could actually be. Uh, a job yeah it was it was last year last February um, 2022 so I'm like that's what I like that's burnt in my brain where I was just like okay I'm gonna actually you know put my all on this and see where I can like take it um, but it was a hair care deal and I loved the brand and it was super exciting I remember talking to my mom about it, I'm like they're asking for my rates I'm like what do I even say like where do I start it was kind of an insane conversation but yeah it's definitely yeah that was that's where I started how do you make money these days um, so TikTok is definitely my biggest platform, um, and yeah, there's paid partnerships there, which I have, it's insane that these brands that I absolutely love, like, have the opportunity to partner with and kind of just, you know, share the love, have a code so people can get a discount and also just, um, yeah, just talk all things beauty. And it's cool to see, like, the reach now that, you know, I'm moving into my new house now, which is such a blessing. It's so insane. But, um, yeah, even, like household partnerships, kind of, it's interesting seeing how like brands, how many brands are tapping into like social media nowadays. What kind of partnerships, or can you name a few of these collaborations you've done? Yeah, so beauty is definitely my main um, category. So recently I worked with YSL Beauty, which was super exciting. NARS, MAC, some of my top like three favorites. And then, um, so fashion, I'm getting to my fashion bag. I'm really excited about that. Um, excited for fashion week coming up and then for home, I'm working with, well, I'm trying to get my foot in the door with a few brands like Pottery Barn or West Elm. Um, so it's super cool to see kind of the reach there. That's so cool. Have you ever, had, you have to name names, but any funny offers you've had for collaborations that you just knew weren't a right fit or just kind of bizarre? I think I know my audience well enough where sometimes it just wouldn't make sense for me to accept a partnership. But, but yeah, it's nice when the right ones do land in my inbox. 
That's so cool. Do you have any, as you know, you have this big platform, big brand, you, your, your marketing is, free, you have to pay for marketing, right? Do you have any, um, what's your the new plans for maybe entrepreneurship or starting your own brands or lines or businesses? Yeah. That's definitely been more of a conversation recently because I think it was such a shock for a while that I was just like, I can't even think that that large. But now I'm working on just building my team slowly and just having more resources and just those bigger conversations. I definitely love to start a brand, I feel like. And I think right now is my discovery year, though I say is like working with different brands, whether it's fashion or makeup or skincare and seeing like what I really love. And I have some fun collabs coming up that I think I'll learn a lot from. Tell me about your team and how you've gone from you know, a nursing graduate mm -hmm. to now you're running a business. How do you do that on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so I was doing it on my own for the first year. Um, and then, you know, once I hit my senior year of nursing school, I was like, I don't know if I can balance this all by myself. Just even answering emails was like taking up half my day. So I was on the lookout, kind of looking for agencies or managements to help me out. And I was connected with one and it was a beautiful, you know, relationship for a while. And then, um, yeah, I recently, you know, expanded my team, working with an agency now, um, which I'm super excited about. Because, I mean, the, the possibilities are just so endless. It's, it's kind of crazy. But um, yeah, I think what's really important to me is like having people I can trust and just, um, it's not about like the name or like the numbers or any of those things. It's really about like that personal connection to me. So it's about like just that care, that mutual respect. Um, and yeah, I'm super proud of my team. I'm really excited. Speaking of connections, so, one of our, you know, for the Forbes top creator list, one of the main ingredients or factors is engagement score. How much your followers and fan base engage with your content, liking, commenting, sharing. Yours is off the charts. It's <laughs> incredibly high. How do you attribute such a strong connection between you and your fan base? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it goes back to, like I said, just building that team around me that cares. I think like it's a mutual feeling. Like I really care about my audience, the people who listen and you know, can relate. I, and when I meet people on the streets who like recognize me and just like, I love your videos, like that goes so far. Like that's, I do it for that one person. And I feel like it's just a, a friendship. Like it, it's, it's crazy. Like I have all these people, like just how the internet can connect people on just another level. How many hours are you on social media a day? Um, I feel like I've been trying to work on that like balance. <laughs> I think, um, you know, it's interesting because it's like, it's fun, but also it's work. So it's like, you know, scrolling for inspiration and also, but like, um, you know, trying to create that boundary where it's like good for my mental health just to disconnect and be present. I think I've really been enjoying that lately um, and just more so planning ahead versus before is more like sporadic, like in the moment, just like capturing everything versus now it's like, okay, I need to make sure like this day I'm filming, this day I'm like really spending for myself. How much work is it to maintain that engagement? Do you feel yourself having to respond often and kind of curate? Like, tell me how that works, like day in the yeah, life. Yeah, I definitely feel like kind of that pressure whenever like I do kind of chill out for a day or two or like miss a YouTube video upload. I'm just like, I feel like there's a sense of like, you know, responsibility to like show up and because I am a consum consumer first, like when my favorite creators wouldn't post for a while to be like, girl, where are you? Like give me an update or something like that. So I just feel like that level of kind of respect where it's like communication and, but also I love doing it, like responding to my comments, you know, cause I guess like I do put work into creating the video. So I love the feedback. I feel like it's always positive. And yeah, I think, I think it's super fun, but definitely something I cherish just that relationship. So. How do you decide what you're going to post that day or the topic or the, the you know, the content? Mm -hmm. I feel like inspiration, like acting on your inspiration, like, and ev every day there's something new, something you can just, you know, whether it's the smallest thing or something you'd be like, oh, like no one would be interested in that. It's like, chances are like someone probably is like, I was talking about getting trash bins and like toilet paper rolls, like things like that for my house. It's like adulting things that like people probably relate on. Honestly, it's, it helps when I have fun plans going on that week. Mm. I can kind of plan, plan around that and like do a get ready with me video or style with me or just simple things like, here's my grocery list, this is what we're going shopping, like, let's go. And you mentioned you know, oversharing and before, you're very real, you're very open with your with your followers. Are there any downsides or drawbacks to that, to kind of living so open in front of the world? Recently, just like privacy, I've kind of uh, been more just aware about just, you know, moving to a new place and just making sure I am like protected. And I think, also just people having access to so much about my life it's like you can use it against me in some ways and just having so much access to my relationships in my life and just like oh you know 
people are very observant, obviously remember things and can have like just a track record. Not saying that like anything, I think I think it's just something I'm more aware of now, for sure. And as you're going into beauty and in style, design and now home design, is there a do you have a dream collaborator? If there was one person across the universe that you could do a video with or you know do a project with, who would that person be right now? Hmm. I think uh, Rihanna is like the first person that comes to my head. I love that woman down and like Beyonce. Like I think music is super important to me as well. I think it's a good way I've connected with my audience too. Is like getting ready with like music in the background. It's like I love this song. Like there's another kind of like connection there. But yeah, I think Riri. She is such a boss in so many ways. Her beauty line, her skin line, her fashion, music, a mother. Yeah, I think that's the one. If you could design a post or a video with you and Rihanna, what would you guys be doing? Maybe a song. That would be fun. Do you do music? I think I like I like music. Do I you, think. Do you sing? Are you a musician? I hit a tune here or there. Okay. <laughs> good. We have that in common. I get you know, one, one tune a year. You know, and that's good. I can hit it. I could be the support. I could be the backup vocals. Okay. You know, I'll be your backup dancer. <laughs> and you just finished your nursing degree recently. Mm -hmm. What are your plans for the future? Do you want to go into that field or that was great, but this whole other kind of, you know, this whole other option opened up for you? There was definitely a fork in the road where I had to decide like which one I was going to put like my all into. And I mean, this being my career now is an absolute dream. And I definitely am chasing it right now, but I'm so glad I graduated. I got my degree and I learned so much in nursing school that I feel like could never, you know, something that can never be taken away from me where it's like just about myself and being a person, just an adult, and also just all the amazing things in the, in the medical field, but, but yeah. Do you find that, that what you learn there are those skills to, to graduate? Have, have, how do you use those in, when you build your business now? I think my first thing is like my support system. It's like having that support, whether it's one friend or like a group of friends that you study with. Um, I think that's important too, like in kind of building this career, it's having people to lean on and you know, my family is like so important to me. My friends like keep your family so, I just keep them so close. So I think I couldn't, I would not be here without them and just them cheering me on from the sidelines too and just like an everyday just listening and you know, inspiring me. So yeah, I think that's a big thing that I kind of has applied. What would you want your legacy to be? I think just believe in yourself because I know so many people, even myself, just lived in so much like doubt for a while. Mm -hmm. Where it's like you stop yourself from so much, you know, you would never know. There's so much more, I always say, just like positive you can give than just like a, a hater could like ever kind of like stop you, you know? So. Is there one field that like you see your future in or that you would dream to kind of, you know, dominate? Mm -hmm. I feel like I love it all right now. I feel like I'm really, that's my job right now is to figure out what it is. I think right now I'm really excited about fashion, like I said. And. Also, something like going into lifestyle, kind of like family. I'm super excited to be a mother. I feel like that's like a big part, I think, with sharing my life in general online. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm really excited to go on that journey and just, you know, learn and grow from that too, so. How many TikTok followers do you have right now? Uh, 3.5 million. 5 million. What is your secret for building a massive fan base? I feel like it's just like, don't be afraid. Don't let fear hold you back. I feel like that's like the biggest thing is people are like, I'm afraid I'm going to be judged. Or I'm afraid that this isn't going to land how it's supposed to. It's like the right ones will stick, I think. And you work with a ton of big brands, especially in the, in the beauty world. What advice would you give to brands and businesses bef to think about before they decide to work with a specific influencer? Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like Definitely do your research and like kind of seeing their audience and what they engage with and um, yeah, it's it makes sense for a beauty brand to reach out to me because I'm constantly talking about products and constantly, you know, you see my comments, people are like, okay, what blush color was that? Or like what brand is like this, this product looks so amazing, like what is that? So yeah, I think it's definitely don't work with creators just because of the numbers, it's like see what is resonating with their audience. That's the most powerful part. And how do you kind of balance serving your fan base then also serving your growing business? Yeah, I think I still have so much fun posting um, and I love now that a lot of stuff is behind the scenes. I feel like now that we've kind of grown to, you know, something like this, I can't share until, you know, next month. But it's kind of building up that excitement every day and like through just kind of little things, keeping them, you know, checking in and staying engaged that way. Um, you know, instead of like that instant gratification where it's like this is like a result to like start to finish. It's more so like you have to come along the journey, but also I can still like, you know, work behind the scenes and have stuff coming out consistently. Monet, thank you so much for joining Yay. us. Yay, thank you for having me. This is so awesome. I can't wait to tell my mom and dad. Please see this. Hi family, thank you.